and the legend that is Derek Lyons. I'm kind of tempted just to let you guys carry on talking and, you know, we can just sit and watch. But um, I'll just start with a couple of questions myself and then I'll open it up to the audience. Have a think of um, some things that you might like to ask. Um, but John, at the beginning you mentioned a little bit about the kind of origins of the idea and where it first came from. Could you expand on that a little and tell us how it evolved into what we saw on screen tonight? Sure. It was, I mean, the whole film started because of this man here, John Chapman, uh, who is the guy who was in my class um, and who came to know John it really did kind of open up this world to me that I was partially aware of as kind of a cinema fan, but um, but I wasn't aware of it as a, as a community. I was trying to get away with paying the full fee, actually, by giving him a couple of Star Wars pictures. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it kind of was born out of... Um, me and Hank were making other films at the time, and we had one car journey where I just started telling him about John, and it just started kind of evolving. It was a really long car journey, and we decided we wanted to make the film. Um, originally, because John was an X-Wing pilot in the film, we planned to just film X-Wing pilots, uh, because that bunch of people are a really interesting crew. But it didn't quite work out. Most of them didn't want to do it. Garrick was the only one who kind of wanted to do it. And at that point, we, Hank actually decided that we'd just cast the net as wide as possible. Um, usually, I do a lot of research. And for this film, I did absolutely no research at all. And I said to Hank, just find me people. Um, I've got this theory that everyone's interesting. And if you sit down with anyone for two hours and say, tell me about your life, it's going to be interesting. So I did no research at all. Hank did all of the research. Hank found all the people, and we just sat down. We've got a really small crew, just um, just Sunny, our director of photography, and Cherilee, our sound recordist. And we just sit down for a few hours, and we just talk. And Hank, how many people did you kind of initially reach out to? Yeah, I'd forgotten about that, actually. Um, I think I just... I tried everyone I could. I mean, initially we, were, you know, we sort of contacted Anthony Daniels and the little guy in the little robot. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. Yeah, and uh, Kenny was funny actually. He was like, "Ah, I'm too old. Fuck off." <laughs> that's actually what he said to me on the phone. I'm like, too old. Fuck off. <laughs> Just like that. Um, but there was a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people connected to the film. Really interesting people. And the fact is that when you call people on the phone, remember speaking to you for the first time, actually, Derek, and um, I was wandering around the garden of my house in northwest London talking to Derek for about two hours, I think, we talked, and he's, I thought, this guy's insane, he's, he has to be not film. <laughs> you know, and he's just a great, interesting guy, fantastic person, it doesn't matter that he was in Star Wars to me, really, and, and honestly, everyone I talked to was like that, they had some tale of something that they'd done, something they were going to do, and so I forgot what the question was, but yeah, quite a lot of people. Um, Derek, can you talk a little bit about um, when you were first approached about the project? Did, was it something you knew instantly that you wanted to be part of? Oh, absolutely. Uh, when Hank initially called me and uh, kept me on the phone for two hours because he talked so much, you know. Um, <laughs> and I just told him all the anecdotes and, uh, you know, about my kind of experience of being in the film business and working on Star Wars, etc. And so um, I didn't think it would come to this, that I'm on the stage with all you wonderful people out there, you know, it's fantastic. Um, so, uh, yeah, and uh, we filmed over, I think it was two years, wasn't it? Yeah, it was two yeah, years. It was about two years. Yeah, and so they filmed, there's other stuff on the special edition extras with me. And uh, <laughs> we can't talk about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, I love a Delphi, not a selfie, yeah. So um, yeah, so it's wonderful to, and obviously I, eventually I, you know, um, I met uh, John at uh, Waterloo Station, not at the station itself, but in a, in a uh, kind of special club. Uh, not a funny, not a funny club, a nice club, not a director's club anyway. And so we met there and it was me and then Anthony Forrest uh, was interviewed after me and they spent about, I think they interviewed me for about four hours actually. Derek does talk. I don't like talking. <laughs> the, I mean, but, talking about the anonymity of it and how, how I let Hank find the people, Derek turned up for his interview an hour early, and I just thought he was staff at the location. He was just kind of <laughs> buzzing around. And I don't think Hank really realised. It took about 20 minutes till we went, oh, God, that's our interviewee. We've got to sit down with him. Yeah. It was a great, I mean, it was a great experience to meet John um, and then Hank and... Uh, the, the people, Sonny, who did the thing, and uh, Cheryl Lee, and the rest of them who came to my house and filmed me in my little house and everything else and in, the, in the forest. I wanted them to come to Sweden because I train in Sweden quite a lot. I go there quite a lot. 
And they said, oh, we haven't got enough money for the budget to film you, so, you know. But anyway, they filmed me in my local park, you know, with lots of rats there, you know, but they didn't film the rats. But, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Absolutely no one goes in that park. <laughs> and you can understand why, can't you? It's because Derek's beating up trees. We got covered in bark while we were filming Derek punching the shit out of a tree. <laughs> Hank actually said, I can't believe it, we're making a kung fu movie too. Which was, uh, you know, was very nice of you to say. So perhaps we'll do that next time. Maybe. <laughs> um, John, I wanted to ask you um, what kind of sense you had of how the film would work overall and the story it was going to tell. And if you had some idea in advance or you let the kind of interviews dictate the shape of the film. Yeah, exactly that. Um, it's the whole. It's really kind of a weird experience because we, the way that me and Hank make films, is really we just have an idea and we have something that kind of intrigues us, and we treat it as a journey. I mean, for us, the making of the film is is the point of doing the film, and um, it's kind of born out of that. And every single interview you do kind of influences you and it influences your take on it a bit more. But really, we got to the point where we had ten interviews, and then we decided, okay, we're done. So we're going to edit it and we're going to see what happens. And then it was. Um, it was conversations, it was talking to Hank, it was talking a lot to Cressida, who's our kind of lead editor on the project, and just kind of whittling the film down and kind of working out what it really was. I mean, I thought the film was actually going to be a lot darker than it kind of turned out to be, but I felt that when I was doing that, I was enforcing darkness on it. You have to kind of let it be what it is. Um, and I still don't entirely know what it is. <laughs> you know, it's a very kind of organic process. Does anyone have any questions for any of our guests? 